Coal Fire Power still has buying power worldwide, and an automaker hopes to create jobs again, but this time for making electric vehicle batteries. I'm Rod Walton, Content Director for Power Engineering at PowerGen International. Coming up, I'll have these stories and more in our weekly Clarion Energy News Wrap-Up. Coal Fire Power has been on the retreat in developed nations over the past decade, but you knew that. Many gigawatts have shut down, and some financial institutions are saying they won't make loans on fossil fuel generation. The numbers don't lie, though, and recent reports have shown that many banks and lenders are still very willing to fund coal power projects, mainly in developing nations. A statement by environmental advocates BankTrack and others indicates that worldwide investment in coal-fired power added up to almost $750 billion since early 2017. Remember that the Paris Climate Accord was only three years ago, so these statistics are alarming to climate advocates. The Coal Exit report noted that more than 1,000 new coal-fired power stations or units are in planning or under construction globally. Of course, there are two sides to every story, even this one. People can argue the impact of climate change, but others note that coal-fired power may be a best option in developing nations where they're simply trying to get baseload electricity to those who don't have it. And I'll leave it at that. How about something we can all agree on? Mutual aid is good. In New York, regulators and utilities are updating their mutual assistance protocols in advance of the winter storm season. With storms becoming more severe and frequent, New York Power Authority and other utilities say it's critical that these utilities and regulators are unified and prepared to help recovery go faster. The updated protocol builds on earlier work and provides New York Power Utilities with an expanded pool of resources from municipal partners across the country. For indeed, New York has benefited from these traveling bands of line workers during Superstorm Sandy while also giving their own services in other states and other disasters. It's a true brotherhood and sisterhood of utilities. Always impressive and always appreciated. General Motors and South Korean battery firm LG Kim will jointly invest $2.3 billion in a new electric vehicle battery plant in the once mighty car making city of Lordstown, Ohio. Lordstown is where GM idled then sold a 53 year old car factory. Joint venture partners plan to hire more than a thousand workers, about the same number laid off when the Lordstown assembly plant was shut down. GM said that the new plant will lower battery costs as the automaker prepares to launch a global family of electric cars, SUVs, and pickups in the next couple of years. The factory will make battery cells for GM's next generation electric vehicles, including the truck that it plans to build in Detroit starting in 2021. The Puerto Rico Electric Power Authority has received three massive and mobile gas turbine sets which can provide emergency on-site power to critical facilities on the island. PW Power Systems made the 30 megawatt mobile pack units to be installed at the Palo Seco power plant. They are available for emergency operations and can run on liquid fuel or natural gas. It was a little more than two years ago that Hurricane Maria knocked out power to virtually all of Puerto Rico and the island is still recovering in many ways. PW Power Systems' three units can meet electricity demand for nearby hospitals and the major airport. And that's a wrap for our latest Clarion Energy News. Remember that Distributech, the nation's biggest annual transmission and distribution event, will be January 28th through 30th in San Antonio. Hope to see you there. I'm Rod Walton, and thank you for watching.